folks, my name is Matthew Peterson. I'm a trainer at Pragmatic Works. And as you saw the intro video, our company does everything from uh, on-demand learning, hackathons, virtual mentoring, uh, and we have this wonderful YouTube channel here. So if you haven't subscribed to this channel before, now's a great time to do it uh, in order to stay up to date with all the videos that we post throughout the years and throughout the months. So with that being said, here's what we're gonna do in this video. This is episode 10 of my Power Platform series. And in this video, what I wanna show you is how you can use a pop-up screen to confirm a delete of a record. In Canvas apps, it's really easy to delete a record. So you might be going, oh, what if I accidentally hit that delete button? I really wish there was like a two-step authentication in order to delete. Well, that's what I wanna bring you today. Also, this method I show you how to use pop-up screens, you can use this for anything, not just for showing a deletion of a record, but maybe for when you click on the record of a gallery, you wanna see extra details about that record. So without any further ado, let's take a look. Also, just so you know, in the description of this video, you can get the completed version of this app after I'm done with it uh, to move on forward with the rest of this series. Uh, I also have the connector instructions of how to make your SQL connections in your environment if you want this app just to play around with and get used to Power Apps. So here we go, let's take a look at our application. So this is an application that we've been building throughout this Power Platform series. And the first thing I want to show you is how we can easily just delete a record. So when it comes to deleting records, we just need something that we can click on and then reference a record for the deletion action. So that's the first thing I'm going to do here. So in my gallery, I have to go into my template cell. So I'm going to select that pencil icon and then I'm just going to insert an icon. And this can be anything that has an on select property, but icons definitely do. Now I'm going to give you my trick. The way I add icons in is I put the first one in that I see. And then once I have it in here, then I come over to the icon drop down in my properties panel. It's a little bit easier to search and find those exact icons that I want. And I'm just going to use the standard trash icon for deletion for today. Now also notice if you're like, what are all those extra icons that you have in your gallery mat? Those relate to past videos. So take a look in the playlist if you're looking about how to send emails to uh, people about a record or how to automate these emails that was in a prior episode. So here's all we do for deletion of a record. I have my icon selected in the on select property. I'll zoom in here. It's just a simple remove action. So I want to remove from my inspection table because these are my inspection records, comma, and because I'm in a gallery, I just say this item because each icon is attached to a record and so this item is how it's referenced. So now if I hit play here and I delete this one with the rating of three, it's now gone. Easy, easy, easy. So I have a son, a four and a half year old, he's about to turn five in a few months and I can just imagine, I know it's happened to me before, I'm working with an app, his crazy legs hit my app screen and then the record is deleted. So to try to safeguard that, I'm gonna add in a pop-up screen here to say, are you really sure that you wanna delete this record? So the first thing that I'm gonna do is get out of the preview mode. Now in order to do this, I sometimes need the pop-up screen to show, other times I need it to be hidden. In order to accomplish that, we're gonna use what are called contextual variables. Contextual variables are only located on the screen that you declare them on. Unlike global variables, which can be called and referenced on any screen within the application. So the first thing I'm gonna do is declare this contextual variable. So over here on my SCR main, which is my screen, I'm gonna to go to a property called the on visible property, which means anytime the screen becomes visible, I want something to occur. And what I wanna do is I wanna declare my variable and then state its value. So the operation that does this is called update context. And then we put in the variable name in our curly braces here. And I'm gonna call this var show uh, delete screen. So var show delete screen. And then I'm gonna give it a value of false to begin with. Because in the end, when I'm finally done with everything, and this is a process, so sometimes it's hard to figure out what's going on until the very end, it all, it all makes sense in the end. But this variable at some point is gonna be on all of my pop-up screen components and the visible property of those components are gonna reference this variable. So at the beginning, all of these components are gonna say, oh, my visible is set to false, so I'm not gonna show anything. So that's the first thing I need to do. Now I need to start building out the pop-up screen itself. So in order to do that, a few different ways, but I'm gonna show you the way that I prefer to do it. I'm gonna come over to my insert section, 
and I'm gonna put in a rectangle. And then on my tree view, I'm actually gonna rename this. So this is gonna be my RCT delete screen, just like so. And then I'm gonna have this take up quite a bit of room on here, just like so. And there's gonna be a reason to this. You might say, well, Matt, that's gonna hide everything, which is true, and you might want it that way. But what I like to do is let them see the screen behind here so they're not kind of, it's not so jarring. So on its fill property, I'm gonna come on over and change the alpha value, which is really just saying how much of the color do you wanna see? So one is 100%. If I put in like a 0.3, now I only see 0.3, 30% of its color. So now it makes it more transparent. So that's the first thing. And again, you can make it any color you want to, obviously. So now the next thing is I want to add in here basically a text that says, are you sure you want to delete the screen or delete the record? Then I'll put in a button that says, yes, I do. Or a button that says, ah, actually, no, I didn't mean to hit that button. So with that being said, I'm going to put in my label first. So I'm going to come over here to the insert. I'm going to put in a text label. I'm going to follow best practices and rename this label in my tree view. So LBL confirm delete. All right, so now I have it, and I'm just gonna move this on around, make it a little bit easier to see here as well. So I'm gonna change the text of it to, are you sure you want to delete the record? And then I'm gonna also modify this font here. So I'm gonna bump it up to much larger, gonna make it bold like so. And then we could do other things here, like I could maybe, let's see, let's see if it looks better in white. Uh, kind of, if I make my, my fill color just a little bit heavier, like a 0.6, now we're not looking too bad. So it's going to say, are you sure you want to delete the record? Again, we're not going to get into all the making sure this design looks great because I just really want to show you how this operates. Let me just change it, though, uh, to a black here. I think that's going to be a little bit easier to see. All right, so I have my first part here. Are you sure you want to delete the record? Next step, I need to add in some buttons that are going to say, yes, I do, or no, I do not. So I'm gonna come up here to insert a button. Gonna bring it on over. I'm gonna double click on this button to change the text. And I'm gonna do my first one of saying, uh, yes, delete. All right, so I have my delete button. And maybe I'll make it to a color like of a green to do a confirmation. So we'll say yes, delete. And then I'm gonna rename this BTN confirm delete. BTN confirm delete. I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna, now I haven't put any actions yet. We're gonna to get to that. So now I'm gonna do another button and I'm gonna say, don't delete here. So don't delete. And then I'll probably make that like a color of a red. And then I'll come over here, BTN don't delete. All right. So now I have all of my components on here. Again, definitely feel free to play with the design. Don't want to waste your time making it look picture perfect and pretty. So the next thing I need to do is I want to take all of these controls and I want to group them together. So that way I can have everything reference my variable for its on visible property. So whether to show or not to show. So how we group all these together is we're going to control select them either on our screen or I can do it over here in the tree view. So I have the buttons, the label, and the rectangle all currently selected. Now I'm gonna right click, and I say I'm gonna group them together. So as you can see, it has now made a new group, and within this group I have the individual controls. I'm gonna rename this group to GRP Delete Screen. Okay, now watch this. So for this group of my GRP delete screen. If I go to its visible property, it has been set to true. By default, everything you put on an app has a visible set to true. Now, if I set this visible property to false, we can see that it goes away. When it's set to true, it now comes back. But here's what I want to do. I want it to always reference my variable. So watch this. Here's how we're going to get it accomplished. So for my visible property, I'm going to say don't be hard coded true or false use that variable I declared, which is show delete screen. And by default, this should now not show because we've declared it as false for the on visible property. So when I go to var show delete screen, nothing is showing. Picture, picture, picture perfect. So now 
what is the next part of the puzzle? Well, the way that I'm building this out, and you could build this in different steps to get to this finals, but this is the one that makes the most logic to me the way I build, the way I'm building it now, is I'm gonna come on over to my delete button, which I should give this a better name. So not button one, button two, not button four, not button, I think this is an icon actually, here it is, this is my icon one. And I'm going to call this ICN delete. This is why you always want to rename things to make things easier to find. So on my icon delete, here is the step that we're going to do. We're going to change the remove function. This icon is no longer going to do removals. Instead, it is going to update my variable. So it's going to update the var show delete screen, which is currently set to false. It is now going to set it to true. So once I have that put in place here, watch what will happen now when I play my application. When I hit play and I hit delete, boom. Now my delete screen pops up, my buttons, my label, everything, because I group them all together. So now we're almost there. The next piece of the puzzle is we have to say, okay, when they hit that delete button, one, we want to remove the record, and two, we then want the screen to disappear. The other button, don't delete, all we want is for the screen to disappear. So let's do the easy button first of, hey, I don't want to delete, let's hide our screen. So what we'll do to get that done, I'll go out of preview mode here. I'll go into my button that says don't delete. So this is my uh, button, don't delete. And for the on select property, it's going to be just the simple update context, var show delete screen. Do I want it to show once they click the button? No, I do not. So I'm going to set it to false. So now if I play my application, if I hit don't delete, it goes away. There, it goes away. So as you can see, the record is never being deleted. So picture perfect. However, the last step that we need to do is we now need to say, okay, when they hit that delete button, delete the record and take that screen, don't make it visible anymore. So here's how we get that accomplished. So on my yes delete button, right here, for its on select property, I'm gonna say, first, I wanna remove an item. So remove, where do I wanna remove it from? My inspection table, my inspection gallery, my inspection table, right? Now, how do we reference the record? So earlier when we did a delete, we just said remove inspection this item because when we click the button, it had the record that we had selected. So we're like, oh, this item. Here though, it's a little bit different because we've already done a selection, we're no longer in the gallery. So I have to tell Power Apps, hey, go look at that gallery where I did click the button and look at which record I had selected when I clicked on my trash icon. So my gallery here is called Gallery 2. And I know that because I now see the green outline around it. Now for naming conventions, I probably should rename Gallery 2 to like Gal Park Inspections or something of that kind, but for now I'm just going to keep it as Gallery 2. Dot selected. Boom. So that's going to say, all right, I'll remove from your inspection table what you selected from Gallery 2. Great, but that's not it. I have one last thing to execute here. So I'm going to do a semicolon. This is how we can chain together multiple functions. And then what I want to do, I want the screen to disappear. So I'm going to have to update my context from var show delete screen. It now needs to be set to false. So that way the screen will disappear. So if we did this all correctly, let's see. So if I hit play, I'll click don't delete. Okay, it goes away. Perfect. Now I'll hit delete. This is May 24th, rating 4, so I'll keep track. I'll hit yes, delete. Ooh, it's gone. My uh, pop-up screen has also now disappeared. So hopefully with that, you now have a way to safeguard, or not really safeguard, but it's at least two steps to hit buttons before you can actually delete the record. And this is just one use case scenario pop-up screens. There are other use cases. Hopefully I'll be bringing some of those to you throughout the rest of this uh, year's Power Platform series. Hopefully you enjoyed. I'm also gonna be bringing to you in the future another way to handle deletions to where when they hit the delete button, they don't get a pop-up screen, the record doesn't delete, but the record disappears from the gallery. We're gonna talk about how we can use patch commands in order to take a record, take one of the values in that record and switch it. Like if we have an archive column, 
And by default, every record we make, the archive has been set to false. Well, with this video I'll be making in the future, when I hit my delete button, I'm going to have the, the archive value switch from false to true. So it's still in the data set, but then I'm going to put a filter on this gallery to say only show me records that have a value of false for archive. So the minute it flips from false to true, it disappears from the gallery so the user thinks it's deleted, but we've actually really kept it in the data set itself. So hopefully you enjoyed. Make sure you like, subscribe, get all of our videos that all of our wonderful trainers here do at Pragmatic Works. And if there's anything that we can help you out with uh, solving your business needs, feel free to reach out. And uh, hopefully I'll see you in the next video.